Jackie writes us, and I would like to thank the Center for Fiction for this wonderful opportunity. It's been such a gift. I would like to thank my wonderful, amazing fellows for the camaraderie and your spirit, and congratulations to the new fellows. This is really such a wonderful opportunity, and it goes by really quickly. Um, and to my friends, my favorite couple in the audience for showing up tonight. Um, Okay, so this story was originally in my MFA thesis, and I spent the better part of this year revising it up on the eighth floor of the Center for Fiction to keep with the nostalgia night. Um, and it's called Assisted Living. And the premise is a girl who's about to go to college gets picked up for a date while she's staying at her grandmother's nursing home. So this is called Assisted Living. My father and I had decamped to the exercise room of the assisted living home. There, we raced side by side, like the limestone cutters in breaking away, like cycling champions around a French curve, like ourselves against ourselves against ourselves. It had all the trappings of an ordinary afternoon, a ritual my father and I had repeated countless times before, except the bikes were nailed down this time and we were miles from home. In the basement exercise room of my grandmother's new residence, we pounded those stationary bikes as if trying to break free. Somewhere east of us were the cuts of Indiana, beyond that the cornfields of the Midwest, and further still the roads of some twisting French countryside. But this was suburban Chicago, and it was my last visit as a kid in my parents' house. I had five days left of summer break, and after that summer I would leave for college. As I biked alone, Dusty treadmill slumped facing the wall in the corner of the room, wearing a cartoon dunce cap only I could see. Hand weights lined the floor in front of the mirror, lightest to heaviest, and plastic peeled off a stack of blue mats against the wall, like something shedding skin. I was in a state of missing. I had yet to actually leave anything, but everywhere around me I was collecting inventory, staring hard at the lines on my family's faces, registering the internal blueprints of rooms, filing recipes, running my hands along the objects that filled up chests and the tchotchkes perched on side tables, even this one, even now. My father, for example, taking down that exercise bike like he could ride it back into mobility, his salt and pepper beard and glasses fogged with breath. He wore the running shorts we'd gotten him that summer for his birthday and a decades old t-shirt from an NPR pledge drive. My dad, big and tall, with commanding shoulders and a deep voice, the kind that silenced criminals on a daily basis from his bench. I was in a state of waiting, and the waiting was taking hold like anesthetics, this antechamber to the rest of your life. Sometime months ago, after high school graduation, I stopped mm -hmm. falling asleep on my own, and by the time we landed in Chicago for our annual visit to see the extended family, I harbored a low-grade addiction to herbal sleeping pills. Every night, I slept increasingly blank, black, hollow dreams. Before the pills took effect, though, I played CDs on my new mini stereo, the kind graduates received as a present before move-in day. Present and serpent are made of the exact same letters. This one came with a handheld remote and spun three discs at a time, so you could toggle between CDs without even having to get up out of bed. When I stayed for my college visit, the girl who housed me showed me how now you could download any song you wanted on something called Napster, and I could only surmise then that college had all kinds of impossibilities waiting. But maybe it was better to be beholden to certain laws, I silently insisted, certain inconveniences, like being forced to get up and rewind from time to time, like having to suffer through the bad songs until you learn to like them, until you get to the good. Every night, before the sleeping pills took hold, though, pulling me under with long, insidious fingers of erasure sleep, I played the exact same order, the twelfth track of a movie soundtrack about falling in love at a high school reunion, followed by the fourth and sixteenth tracks of a greatest hits album of my favorite aging Americana rocker. Somewhere in the streets of Jersey, or the cul-de-sacs of suburban Detroit, the cornfields of Indiana, young people were burning treads into the late night hours of their summers, Shorelines and factories spiked with dawn. In the darkness of my room, however, alone in my bed, it was enough just to hear it. Heartland music rolling out over the sheets of cool air rising up from the vents. Sometimes the theme song to the Wonder Years floated in from the TV room next door after my brother got home from the night shift. 
it was enough to make you wonder what else you were missing. Thank you.